Mm -hmm. There we go. All right then, guys. Well, welcome, welcome. Filming again from the motherland, which is quite nice. I think this is my first ever um, live stream that I've done from the motherland, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. So, yeah, as you can see, I've got Thumper behind me, my drum kit, which I miss. I miss dearly. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it's pretty cool to be uh, to be along and uh, and get a bit of time at home. It was strange because um, I was flying out um, from Copenhagen and at midnight, the day after, um, well, basically at the midnight, when I was flying, my flight left at 22.40. The midnight after that was they were going to stop flights to and from the UK out of Copenhagen. So I got out like just bang on time. And I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that I can get back on the 10th when I'm scheduled to. We need to see. See that we've got quite a few comments already. So this is pretty cool. We've got the Italian man, Severio Trieste. So perfect timing out, uh, for taking out the fridge, the 75 centiliter Lefe Rouge and enjoying the show. <laughs> yeah, no, ideal. It's always nice to have you along, Severio. Um, and what's your favourite Lefe? Have you tried every single one? Um, probably it would still be the blonde. I do like the blonde. Um, the Brune. I've never been a fan of Belgian Bruins, to be honest with you. It's a style I, I'm not a great fan of Dubels, and I'm not a great fan of Bruins. Honestly, when it comes to the lighter Belgian stuff, I do like the blondes a little bit more. Um, and uh, I like, you know, Tripel and Quadrupel. Obviously, I do like those. And Saisons can be nice. Um, but yeah, more into the kind of. I think in fairness, I probably am a little bit more of a kind of malt head rather than uh, rather than anything so yeah in that sense but yeah for me probably the Leffe Blonde the classic Leffe Blonde I do actually have the Hevern um, in the fridge in Sweden but I never got the chance to review that I've got quite a few winter beers that I'll need to review early when I get back in um, in January so those will be like uh, late reviews but I had so much beer in Sweden, it was just kind of ridiculous. It was getting tiring actually trying to. Uh, I was doing two reviews a day just to try and you know empty the fridge a little bit, and that's just how it goes sometimes. So in some stages, it can be tiring. So yeah, no, that was one of the reasons as well, Severio, why um, I wanted to delay your box a little bit because yeah, the next two boxes that we'll be doing will be uh, Riku box number two and uh, your one will be the next one I think Severio an Italian box those will be the next two and then I've also uh, got an Austrian guy who wants to arrange a box as well so yeah that's one of the things but yeah Lefe the Heaver nail you might see I might just film that and then keep it till next winter you never know we can't always do that um, but uh, yeah not awesome happy holidays from John and Sarah in Maine, USA. Oh yeah, guys, nice to have you along. Nice to have you along. Yeah, maybe see you guys actually when I go to Maine, COVID permitting, next um next June. So yeah, yeah. Um so <laughs> Adam saying very purple. Good evening. Yeah, no, this is actually it must just be the camera and the way the lights focus and I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, no, this is actually red behind me. Um, I'm actually wearing black. I'm not wearing purple. So, yeah, it must just be the, the camera, I think. Yeah, the camera on the laptop's a bit sensitive to low-level light and things. But, uh, yeah, no, that's it. That's it. And uh, Top Shell was saying, I play guitar. Yeah, I played Spanish guitar, flamenco guitar, since I was uh, seven. I actually, I've got, I need to take my Spanish guitar out to Sweden and record a few things actually so um, yeah no, I need to record a few things for that and I miss I miss playing the drums the drums was always great played heavy metal on the drums and played classical guitar that was always it um, yeah I'm enjoying Sierra Nevada Hot Bullet oh yeah I've not had that one in a wee while actually not had that one that's quite nice I have to say uh, hi James I'm having the Lervik driving home Christmas 0% ABV what is that is that like a one of these low alcohol stouts or what exactly is it? Yeah. Let's see. Brown ale in any language is lovely. I do yeah, I do enjoy an Imperial Brown, but I don't like I have to say I just Belgian Bruins, I don't like the slightly more kind of phenolic thing that you get from them, to be honest with you. Um but yeah. Red Water Energy. Have you ever had Youngling? No, that's one that I do need to to try and review the next time when I get over to the States next summer. But yeah. 
Mares, yeah, top shelf is agreeing, definitely. <laughs> uh, good evening, James, and I bet it's a pleasure to be back in Blighty. <laughs> back in the back in the motherland of Scotland, yeah. <laughs> we don't really call it Blighty, to be honest, but yeah. Um, back in the motherland, I would say. Uh, but yeah, no, Simon, nice to have you along. We need to, when I get to London to see uh, Craig, we need to, um, how do you say, we need to... Um, you make sure to get you along for a beer. You can come out on some of the filming trips with us and things like that that Craig and I will do. So yeah, uh, Yungling is a great beer for craft beginners. Yeah, I need, as I say, I need to try that one. Where in Sweden do you live? Uh, I live in Lund. I live in Lund. Uh, yeah, in Skjone. So yeah, your proto Skjonska, I can't wait. Your träffad några människor från Stockholm. Nu var jag när jag var i England och de sa, oh, du låter som en skånsk. Svens talare. So, yeah, that was quite interesting. They laughed at me because my Swedish accent was skånsk. But, uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, is this a Prince music video? Not sure of the reference there. Is it the purple and the red, the way the camera is going? But, um, yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> and now you're in the motherland. Any chance to have a, a Scotch whiskey on the channel? I need to see what my dad's got, actually. Um, the whiskey has obviously taken a bit of a back seat. Whiskey. Um, the thing is, I like tasting the different whiskies, but to buy a big 70 bottle of a whiskey for, um, you know, to, to review is, I would only drink, you know, like maybe two shots, maybe three worth of it. Like I would only drink 50 mils or 75 mils of it or something. And then I probably wouldn't drink the rest. You know, for me, even with the beers, I just like, I like tasting different stuff, but I would like to review more whiskies. I've got some sakis that have been sitting in the fridge in Sweden as well, which is, um, which I need to, you know, I need to get those reviewed too. It's a bit difficult to research the Japanese sakes, but uh, yeah, I think my dad's got a couple of whiskies that I can potentially take a look at. Yeah, I need to have a look at that. Um, yeah, um, is it supposed to be dark roasted Christmas? Not very good. Mm. The low alcohol dark beers don't tend to be that good, I have to say. Love Scotch. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> Vanessa's saying hello. Nice to have you along, Vanessa. And then top shelf reviews, Glen Morangie is my favourite. I've never tried that, come to think of it. I think it's Glen Morangie. Where I'm, I might remember, are they Glen Morangie? Are they a Highland whiskey? Uh, the Glen Morangie, the silly. Rossshire, ah, yeah, that's a way up there. Okay, that's a way up in the Highlands. Mm -hmm. Just looking exactly where it is. Yeah, north of Inverness. So that's, that's not roughly where, that's near Dingwall. Yeah, or further north. But yeah, no, I've, not, I've never tried Glen Morangie, actually. There's so many whiskies it's a bit difficult to keep up with but yeah anyway that's the comments the comments coming in thick and fast there but yeah um yeah finesse i'm wishing everyone happy holidays as well so yeah happy holidays guys happy holidays um but yeah um let's crack on with uh, this unboxing and some of the other beer tubers i think wanted to join in a little bit later um but we'll see i've actually got a few american beers here that i've had sitting for a wee while that i can show you as well so we'll look at these a little bit later because i probably will get these drunk this time but yeah um big shout out to the guys at uh, valhalla's goat in glasgow for sorting out this box for me um you know they took a lot of time they sat with me on the phone i asked them about certain breweries and stuff and they uh, they managed to sort it for me so that was awesome so a big thank you to the guys at valhalla's goat for this awesome stuff but yeah we have this one we have this guy here i think i paid like i think it was about 70 for quite a few beers yeah the scottish beers are a wee bit more expensive than the, the swedish ones right enough but um i just kind of thought you know going home i need to isolate for 10 days and um yeah i just thought well i'll get a few beers and film some scottish beer reviews because i don't get all that many and i have got um Paul, who is the Irish beer importer into Scotland, he's going to sort me out with some Irish beers apparently as well. So we'll need to figure that out too. But um, yeah, right, let's get this last bit open. So yeah, we'll see about sorting out some Irish beers, both from the North and from the Republic. But um, yeah, so yes, we have a very nice... Um, a very very nice thing here to have a look at today a few more comments lovely 18 years happy holidays to you all yeah awesome okay then good so um 
yeah, my receipt and things like that. Thank you, Valhalla Scott. That's awesome. Yeah, they've got their own postcards and stuff. This is pretty cool, actually. Love it. Awesome stuff. So, um, yeah, this should be quite cool. This definitely should be quite cool. We've got one or two breweries in here that I haven't um, had before. Um, but, yeah, start off with a kind of brewery that seems to have been... Um, We'll start off with one that seems to have been getting a lot of praise recently. So, yeah, Vault City, tropical sour mango, coconut, passion fruit. Um, I think this is one. I just told the guy I wanted um, a couple from Vault City. And um, this was the one I said. He, he listed a few off to me. And I said, which one would you recommend? He said that. So we went for this one. Tropical sour, 7.2% ABV. Um, yeah. Mango, coconut, and passion fruit. This should be quite interesting. So, yeah, one from Vault City. You can't go wrong with these guys. These guys, I've had some really, really good stuff from them. The Iron Brew Sour. There were a few, actually, that they've been releasing that um, seem to be really, really good. Um, but, yeah, I was just quite happy to take his recommendation, to be quite honest. We do have um, another Vault City in here as well. So this is one that I'm very curious about. This is more of an Imperial Sour, actually. I'm not sure if this one is meant to be like a pastry sour or exactly what it is. But, um, yeah, this should be quite cool. It seems that Vault City are basing themselves in Dundee these days as well. But, um, yeah, they're brewing at 71 Brewing up in uh, the old steelworks in Dundee. Yeah, but you can see double crust raspberry pie, 9%. I do love a good raspberry. Raspberry are probably, you know, one of the kind of sc classic Scottish desserts, if you like. But, yeah, double crust raspberry pie. This is going to be a monster, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, we'll see about that. This should be pretty cool. Let me just check this, what's going on here. Uh, just keeping an eye on the feed as well to make sure that it's going nicely um because yes yeah, sometimes they can be a little bit of a pain sometimes with that so we've got uh, a mate of mine keeps telling me to try octomore i've never heard of those guys actually let's do a quick google on that octo octomore what's this uh, octomore whiskey super peated ah bruich laddich are they wait, are they i forget are they highland or speyside i think they're highland aren't they bruich laddich um Oh, they're Isla. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> I always forget where all these different ones are from. But anyway, no, Bruich Laddich. I've heard that name before, but that's, yeah, that is definitely one I need to uh, have a little look at. Are you going to do a trip to Brewdog Brewery since you're home? That's actually something that I still need to do. Um, Brewdog Brewery is about two and a bit hours away. It takes about two hours to get up to Aberdeen. And then... Um, you know, it's about another half hour up towards Ellen. So I do need to do that at some stage. Um, but uh, yeah, Brewdog, there's more There's more interesting breweries in Scotland these days, I would say. There's more interesting stuff to look at than Brewdog. But I guess it's something to uh, that I should do at some stage. But uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, Thomas is saying um, Isla for this. Yeah, Isla Whiskey, absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, awesome. So our next one, our next one here then um yeah this is a brewery that i really really like actually uh, and i'm curious about this beer because i need to try something from the lighter end of the spectrum from them so dead end brew machine this brewery is owned by an irish guy um they don't brew all that much actually they don't brew such high volumes and you can only really get them through in glasgow to be honest with you but yeah this one's called the total fury passion fruit ipa 7.2 percent abv this should be quite nice. I think this one was about six pounds or something like that, or five sixty or something like that. But yeah, um, yeah, no, these guys do some really good stuff. They're a lesser known Scottish brewery, and it's saying that this beer is brewed at Overtone Brewing Company. Um, so yeah, Dead End Brew Machine do know what they're doing. Um, Irish owned brewery here in Scotland, but yeah, look forward to that. I think it was the name that attracted me to this one, Total Fury. So yeah, these guys. Are definitely an awesome one to check out um oh yeah now um this is one that i was very curious about um fallon brewing company the the big raspberry dog chew so yeah one of their kind of classic beers is the um the chew chew which is a salted caramel stout and i think they released that originally as a um 
you know, as a sort of limited edition beer. But I asked in uh, Valhalla Scott if they had anything from these guys that was quite unusual. But he said, no, no, we just, well, this one. He said only this one that they had. So I might need to look in my local shop in Stirling and see if there's anything crazy from uh, from Fallon. But yeah, this one, raspberry dog chew, um, salted caramel and raspberry milk stout, 10% ABV. That might be a very nice Christmas day beer. That might well work out to be a very nice Christmas day beer. So, yeah, we'll see about that. Um, yeah, that would be pretty awesome. But I've had some really good beers from Fallon over the years. Uh, Platform C is a lovely IP. I don't know if they still do that, to be honest with you. I don't know if they still do the, the, the Platform C, but there's a few others there that they have that I need to have a little look at. Um, yes, now this is one that I'm really curious to see because this is a style that I've not had from Fierce yet. So we're going to go to Fierce, based in, oh, the camera hates that, Fierce, in Dice, uh, where the airport is in Aberdeen. And this is just a Pils, Fierce Pilsner. I thought this would be a really interesting one to try. I love this brewery. Um, I'm actually quite jealous. Thomas, who's commenting, he um, he was able to um, to get some really interesting beers from these guys. So I hope that I can uh, review a few more from Fierce. I need to see about getting a few more when I'm I'm back in February for my dad's birthday. So I might need to see about doing a, an online order from uh, from somewhere and get it delivered um, and just get a few more things from Fierce. But yeah, Fierce Pilsner, straight up beer. This, you guys will know if you've been watching the channel that um, I love uh, Pilsner beers. I'm going through a bit of a lager phase at the moment, so I will definitely be looking forward to that one. Um, but yeah, let's see. Iron Brew was the first drink I had from Britain when I was 19. It was orange in colour and pretty damn good in moderation. Yeah, Iron Brew, I'm probably like probably one of the very, very few Scottish people who doesn't really drink it. <laughs> it's something I never really got into Iron Brew that much, I have to say. Um, but my uncle, I remember my uncle used to drink a ton of it. He absolutely loved the stuff. They changed the recipe recently, I think, because of the sugar tax. Um, but I think they've re-released the original recipe and just put it up a bit. Um, but I think even if Barr, even if the, if Barr from Glasgow were to put the price of it up to for the sugar tax, people would still buy it anyway. I wouldn't think that would hurt their sales very much, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, um, my German friends all loved um, Iron Brew as well. Uh, more people saying hi. Window Beer review with Thomas. Nice to have you. Um, hi, Thomas. Let's see, Buckfast, yes or no? Fried Mars. I actually didn't, I you know, <sighs> Buckfast, I actually quite enjoyed a bit of Buckfast, but... Um, so I don't really drink it that often. Yeah, don't really drink the Buckfast all that often, to be honest with you. Um, my flatmate used to love it. He always used to get a, he always used to bring us a bottle of Buck, um, and we used to sit and drink that in the days of being a student in uh, in Aberdeen, next to Pitodry. Aye, it's always good. Um, yeah, Buckfast. I've never tried a fried Mars actually. That's definitely on the list. But um, yeah, had the very big moose from Fierce. I think I've reviewed that. I have reviewed one of the. The big moose beers from uh, from Fierce Brewing Company. Like Fierce are very very good. Whenever anyone asks me about Fierce beer, I always think you know the the big dark imperial stouts or the um yeah the big dark imperial stouts or the the big kind of fruity sours and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, Cafe Racer Barrel Aged. Oh, I think was that what Thomas and I reviewed. It might well have been like Barrel Aged Cafe Racer. I think that's one that we reviewed together on his channel actually, and that was really good. Yeah. Really enjoyed that one. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, let's go on here then. This is a brewery that I didn't know about. Um, this is a brewery that I um, I was recommended by them. I asked them if there was any new Scottish breweries that um, I hadn't uh, that I wouldn't have heard of. So yeah, we've got these guys, Brewers of Leith, and this one is the New Barns Paleo, which apparently they were telling me has been getting a lot of um, attention. Um, yeah, so this one I think should be, um, this should be pretty cool. I'm very curious about this um, new Edinburgh brewery. Um, it's one of the things I guess in Scotland you have to watch a little bit when you're ordering beers. Sometimes it's best to get some from Glasgow. Sometimes it's best to get some from Edinburgh because there's very small breweries in each place, like you know Campervan and Stewarts and things like that that you can only really get in Edinburgh. Um, you don't really find those in Glasgow, and likewise, some of the other Glasgow stuff, like Dead End Brew Machine, is hard to find in uh, in Edinburgh. Um, but um, yeah, no, this is pretty cool. So 
yeah, Brewers of Leith, New Barns, five point no, sorry, four point five percent paleo. This one, this should be pretty damn cool. Um, yes, and we've got one of my favourite Scottish brewers, probably one of the most consistent Scottish brewers. I actually come to think of it, going to go back to Tempest for this one. So yeah, this one is the Kessanuma Stout. This I think was the only beer they had in Valhalla's got that I hadn't had. Uh, for, from them but this one is a collaboration with Yokohama's Roto Brewery so I'll need to do some research on them actually it's quite cool to have them um, I've never had anything from Roto in Japan so I'll need to see about sorting that uh, when I get to Tokyo next time I'm sure I'll be able to get some of the Yokohama stuff up in Tokyo um, but yeah this one I think uh, Supposed to have Japanese oyster sauce, oyster sauce, clove, cardamom, sweet malt, and oaky whiskey flavors. So this, I think, should be a bit of a special one. I've not reviewed many oyster stouts. I don't really eat fish, to be honest with you. But the one or two, I had one or two oyster stouts in Japan, and they do tend to be quite good. They're just, you know, kind of salty almost. But I think this one could be very, very interesting. This reminds me of some of the stuff that you get from the likes of um, Saint Gallen brewery over in uh, over in japan they've got some really interesting beers like this but yeah kesanuma stout from tempest down in gala shields this will be really interesting this one so the second layer of beers yes um where do we start here duh, 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 duh. um yeah oh yeah we have another um fallon one actually i forgot i thought we only had one fallon um yeah so the sleeper pills again. This is me. Um, this is this is me, just filling filling my lager fetish that I have at the moment. So yeah, this one four point six percent dry hopped pilsner. I think this should be pretty nice. Actually, it's always nice to get a few beers in from Fallon. These guys are fairly local to me. They're all by Calendar, if I remember rightly. It's, it's out that sort of way. Um, so kind of northwestish of uh, of Stirling, my hometown. So yeah, um, it's always nice to have a few beers from Fallon, and it's nice to get a few lagers. And I've not had too many Scottish brewed lagers come to think of it. So yeah, this should be pretty cool actually. Yeah. Um. All right then. Um. Our next one. Ah yeah, this is a brewery that hasn't featured on the channel before, um, but I've heard very good things about. So yeah. This one here, Brew Tune. These guys are from Peter Head, Peter Head, just to the north, uh, to the northeast of Aberdeen, right on the nose of Scotland, if you like. But I've heard really, really good things about these guys. Um, and this one, I think, is just their one of their it's their core IPA, the Loose Cannon. I've never tried anything from um, these guys before, so this is one that I really want to have a look at. They've got their own uh, bar in Peterhead, from what I understand. So if the lockdown and stuff has eased by the time I get over in uh, February, then I will take a little trip up there and film a wee out and about video. Maybe we can do a Meet the Brewery interview with these guys as well. That would be awesome. I think that was one of the plans I wanted to do in February, was to... Um, have a few more, you know, do a few more meet the breweries and uh, and stuff like this. A few more comments coming in. Uh, Thomas is saying it was, yeah, the VBM is awesome. So, yeah, the Cafe Racer, Cafe Racer was the one that Thomas and I had. And then Very Big Moose is awesome. Yeah, I think I reviewed that back in like 2018 or something, if I remember rightly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the wife... Uh, wife's on her way home and has picked up a few beers for me. I hope she didn't choose natural ice. <laughs> oh man, uh, just kidding. She knows better. Um, I know that it's a beer show, but I have to admit that the UK has decided to finish 2020 with a bang. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, we need to see. It's. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. I think there's going to be the UK. They've not been very good at managing things for sure. Um, it's just it's a bit tiring in some ways it's nice to be home but in some ways i kind of wish i'd stayed in sweden and just enjoyed the the freedom a little bit longer because at this point i think you know where i got told oh you have to isolate for 10 days by my time my isolation's over there's a lockdown and stuff like this um it is you know it is tiring i can understand the scientific reasons and stuff for it but i think there's too many people now that aren't obeying the rules uh, and in scotland you know in in the scottish case they should have shut the border um a long time ago because a lot of the spread a lot of the second wave came from like university students in england from what i gather so you know we should have been closing the border quite a while ago um to stop this thing spreading but 
um, yeah, that's the fault of the kind of Scottish government. But I think at the same time, it was everything went well for the first little bit of the lockdown. Um, but there was, a, I think, the Scottish government. They supposedly wanted to shut down a little bit earlier, but they got slaughtered in the press for it, and they didn't do it. So, yeah, that's how it goes. You can't. The government governments can't win. Um, governments can't really win in this point, can they? But yeah, again, politically. We'll see what's going to happen in Scotland. It's going to be an interesting year. We've got an election in May coming up. So, yeah, very good stuff. But anyway, um, right, next one then. What are we going to go for now? Yeah, we'll go for, go for this one then. So, yeah, um, one of my local breweries. And these guys actually own Valhalla's Goat as well. So, um, yeah, Williams Brothers. These guys are from literally a mile or two away from me, just along in Alloa. And this is one of the latest Tallboy cans that they've released, the Sapien Hazy Kvike IPA. Um, you know, Williams Brothers, for me, these Tallboy cans I'm very curious about. Um, Williams Brothers, for me, one of my favourite, or my favourite beers probably from Williams Brothers, it was always Caesar Augustus that I liked. Um, what was the other one? It's gone right out of my head. Um, you know, I would always consider Williams Brothers to be a sort of session ale type brewery, and not a Harry Meadows session ale, a proper session ale uh, brewery, you know, like brewing the sort of 4 or 5% things. Um, so, yeah, these tall boy cans that they're doing are quite different. This one, uh, a fake IPA, it's 7.5% ABV. So, yeah, this hazy, they're calling it a double IPA, but this is, I wouldn't, I would always say it's a bit, 7.5%, you're right on the edge of what you can call a double IP, I think. But um, yeah, it is cool to see Williams Brothers doing a few more things like this. So I'm curious about this, the Sapien Hazy Fake IPA. It's cool to see these breweries doing a little, a few more adventurous things. Um, Black Isle Brewery up in the Highlands, actually, were one who've been doing a few more interesting things. That was a brewery that I forgot to ask about when I was doing this order, actually. So hopefully I can figure out a, a review from Black Isle at some stage. I think my uh, local, sh my shop in Stirling actually might have one or two of their things. So we'll try and figure that out. Um, yeah, another one then. So, um, <laughs> Overtone. These guys getting a lot of plaudits in Scotland at the moment. Um, this one, the I-Man IPA, 6%. I think this was one of the new ones, uh, but this should be pretty good. Centennial, Simcoe and Chinook. Um, I think this will be pretty nice. This is a New England IPA by the looks of it. It's using um, you know, it's using a, a London Fog yeast, so this one will be um, a New England IPA by the looks of it. These guys, as I say, doing some really nice stuff. I do want to get a few other beers from these guys and review those when I'm home, but as I say, I've got another opportunity in February, so maybe I can sort something out uh, then. I might try and just or do, a, do an, a, I very rarely order from the single brewery, but um, I might just do a, a mail order from uh, overtone when I get back next time. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got a few others. Rumours that Sweden are going... Uh, uh, rumours have Sweden going straight to withdrawals as well. We'll see what happens. I mean, Sweden, they put out the thing about oh, social distancing stuff has to shut at 10 and blah, blah, blah. But I've not really, I didn't really see that happening before I came back, actually. So we'll see that as well. Um, rumours closing border towards Denmark as well. I would wonder if that, if the Swedes would be doing that or if that would be the Danes. I would be, I think it'd be more likely that the Danes would do it than the Swedes, to be quite honest with you. Um, that's what happened before, but then there was a deal done so that those coming from Skåne could uh, go into Copenhagen because there's a lot of people obviously in Skåne that work in, uh, in Copenhagen. Now I'm going to be included in that later, I guess. But um, yeah, um, I love the town of Calendar. I have some great childhood memories in that town. Always, I remember Salmon jumping along the wee burn, uh, the best baker I've ever seen. Yeah, Calendar's very nice, actually. Um, if Calendar was a bit, I mean, I actually don't know if I was ever to move back to Scotland, which, to be honest, I think is quite unlikely. I do think that is unlikely. Um, if I ever was to move back, Calendar could be a, a choice for a more country place, but I think I actually would quite like to live in um, in Stirling or somewhere very close to Stirling, like Bridge of Allen or, you know, something like that. But Calendar is nice. Calendar is quite nice. Best wishes to you in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll need to see if I can get back. That's the thing. Need to see if I can get back. Um, yeah. I can't uh, build on a smokehouse come spring to have salmon and all sorts in the smoker. Oh, that'll be very nice. Get some nice beef in there. 8% double IPA here always good um ollie hang beer lover and drummer nice no yeah <laughs> yeah drummer 
guitars and stuff like that. It's awesome. Yeah, I saw your comment earlier. I need to reply to some of the comments in the videos. I need to catch up on a few of those and do my other social media stuff. Been busy the last couple of days. But yeah, uh, nice to have you along, Ollie. We've got Davor checking in to say hello. Always nice to have you, Davor. Let me know in on Facebook if you want to join the um if you want to join in a little minute, I'm going to open it up soon. Uh, cheers, top shelf. By the way, we in Italy have a lockdown from the 24th December to the 6th of January. 25 liters of wine and grappa and vice beer. Okay, you're going to have fun then, Severio, definitely. Um, Swedes, uh, your king made a speech that things are going to that are going not so well, and they need to be more strict with the rulings. That's quite a big step, actually. Um, if the king's is coming out and speaking out against the politicians, because usually the the Swedish king takes absolutely nothing to do with the political side of things. So yeah, that's a pretty important step, actually. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's interesting in Severio. Everyone's saying cheers to Severio. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next beers then. We've got five left. Um, yeah. This one. Um, just when I was saying earlier as well that we weren't really able to get stuff from Stuart Brewing uh, in Edinburgh through in Glasgow. I forgot I had this one. <laughs> yeah. The Affle, Affogato. Uh, coffee stout this one 5.5 percent vanilla caramel espresso stout this looks like one of the more experimental beers from Stuart but it looks like they've changed their branding as well actually which is uh which is quite interesting Stuart always had very kind of classic branding actually but yeah I love these guys um first world problems the Belgian IPA was always a kind of classic one um what else did I have there was a few other beers had um New Zealand hops in them because um was it that he spent a bit of time in New Zealand, actually? I know the guys at Tempest spent a bit of time in New Zealand. But, yeah, Stuart Brewing always loved um, a, few Amer a few American hops and um, and things like this. Uh, but it's Colombian coffee that's in this one, so this should be very nice. Uh, this one apparently was brewed in collaboration with the with uh, Brewdog in St Andrews. I didn't even know that Brewdog had a bar in St Andrews these days. So many Brewdog bars. But the one to ask, of course, about that is Greg Bullman. He's got a PhD in... Uh, yeah, he's got a PhD in brew dog discounts and things like that. But yeah, Project 7 is our series of limited edition beers exploring exciting and innovative styles. So yeah, Affogato Stout from Stuart Brewing. One of the breweries that I always try to review at least one thing from when I'm home. Love these guys. Very good stuff. Um, yes, we have. And the next ones are all from breweries that we've mentioned before already. So we have another one from Dead End Brew Machine. Um the best, you know, I was so blown away. This is going to, this will be my third one from these guys. But the thing was, the last time I reviewed one of their beers, and the only time so far, um, I was just kind of blown away by it. But this one is um, called Sun Gone. The last one I had from them was the Nightland, and it had like 10 malt varieties or something in it. But this one is a bit Swedish. It is a cinnamon bun, double stout, 10% ABV. 10.5 sorry so this thing will be an absolute monster but yeah their last one that i had the, the you know the night land that was just an absolute monster and again when i was speaking to them at valhalla scott i said what have you got from debt from a uh, dead end brew machine he said an ipa and this i was just i literally was just like fuck it give me both of them you know i don't get to review dead end stuff all that often so there we go there we go um another one from overtone another one from overtone uh, and yeah another lager beer the Kalista Pills. Really curious about this one. Um, so yeah, this one has Haller Tower, Hersbrook and Kalista in it. Uses UK lager malt. This will be quite interesting. And then a Czech Pilsner yeast. So yeah, 4.5% Pilsner beer, this one. Really curious about this. The other thing I wanted to get from Overtone was their stout. So I, I don't know. I've, I've got three weeks here, so I probably do have time, if I do it now, to get a, a beer order in. So maybe I will order from direct from overtone and get a few other things from these guys and get them done because they're doing a lot of very nice stuff just now one beer i would always recommend from these guys the rwandan coffee ipa and um, they've changed the name of that slightly um but that was the first beer i tried from them and it was amazing it was really really nice um you wouldn't think coffee ipas would work but i've had two very good ones the first one was from these guys and then i had the wizards and gargoyles from stone and uh, modern times over in california and it was awesome but yeah that one is that should be pretty damn cool actually Kalista pills yeah nice to try different beers different styles from breweries that they're not so well known for actually um second last beer from this lot and this one apparently has been getting 
some really good reviews. Uh, another Williams Brothers. This one is called The Juice Tiger. I remember Amundsen had a beer called The Space Tiger, which was awesome. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, you can see that there. Williams Brothers with their Celtic symbol. This one is just being described as a, uh, a double dry hopped IPA. So I think this one will be quite interesting as well, for sure. Really, really curious about this. Uh, as I say, I've not had any of these tall boy cans from uh, Williams Brothers, but it's always nice to see the established breweries having a go at some of the the more stab, you know, having a go at craft beers. Actually, Black Isle were doing it. Williams Brothers doing it. We'll see what else comes. We will see what else comes out of that. Um, but yeah, the last beer then is another one from Bruton, the Jail, and it is one of their core range beer, the Riot Red Ale. I do enjoy a good Red Ale, so this I think should be. A really really nice one so yeah we'll see these guys as i say been getting rave reviews and uh, just curious to see what they have in store so yeah that is all of the scottish beers that i have at the moment i do have a few other kind of random american bits and bobs here that i'll uh, need to have a go at what have i um yeah, so I got this one um, from Prairie Street Brewing Company. This is one that I we stopped. We just stopped off at this brewery um, on the way back from Iowa when I was at my friend's wedding. So this one is a, a Turkish coffee. Is a Turkish coffee stout, if I remember rightly. Um, Sumatran coffee and rich cardamom. Um, so yeah, this this is one that I will try and get reviewed this time. I'll be sharing these with my dad, the big stouts. Um, this is a brewery that I struggled to find out a bit last time but this is another big um imperial stout it's brewed with them um, uh, london fog and vosk fight yeast so this should be quite interesting but manual brewing company uh the concrete island i need to i tried to message them through facebook and they just didn't respond because there's like no information about this brewery there maybe that's maybe changed since the last time i was here so i will need to look at that um i also have this one the triple bash dragon's milk that should be pretty damn cool. That was uh, this one was given to me by um, Jesse Holden, my friend over in Chicago, who used to send me random things from over there. Um, he showed me around different places in Chicago. He was in some of my out and about videos that I did. But yeah, the triple mash dragon's milk should be a really really interesting one. A big seventeen percent monster. Um, and then we have two, not one but two bourbon counties. So. Very curious to try these ones. These are the 2018 editions. Um, this one's a wheat wine aged in bourbon barrel. So I've not tried too many wheat wines. First wheat wines I encountered were actually in Japan. And was that Sankt Gallen or was it Dyson G beer? I honestly can't remember if it was Sankt Gallen or Dyson G beer. But um, yeah, this one should be uh, really interesting. Goose Island, of course. And the Bourbon County series. This one could, will be cool. What is this? What percentage is this one? Uh, 15.4 Jesus, that's a monster and then the last one will be um, yeah, one of the, the Bourbon County Stout actually um, this one, 2018 edition once again and that's 14.7 I don't, I think the percentages of these changes um, every year actually but um, that would be pretty this one I think will be pretty interesting I need to keep this bottle for my decorations for my channel and take it out to Sweden with me when I get my new place and then we'll see about that but um, yeah that's all the beers I really have to show you guys let me just fire the link um, to join into the um, let me join into these things um, we'll see there we go let's go through the rest of the comments then fire the link off um, yeah there we go we've got a few others in there they're saying have you tried? Um, could you rewind? Could you rewind before the COVID? If you'd re, would you stock your fridge with? <sighs> I don't know. To be honest, I never drink the same beer once. I, so I never drink the same beer more than once. And um, for me, it's all about kind of just tasting different stuff and you know learning about new hops and things like that. For me, my go-to's would be you know like Pilsner Urquell, uh, Leffe Blonde. Uh, <sighs> You know, I always liked Brave New World, actually, from uh, these guys, from Tempest. The Brave New World IPA was good. Always enjoyed one of those. Um, 
you know, things like that. I don't really have a sort of go-to beer, if you like. I always just like tasting different stuff, to be quite honest with you. Um, yeah. Have you tried some uh, beer from Williams from Williams Brothers in Scotland? I had the Joker. Yeah, these I, should, I had these earlier, Severio. The, these two. Williams Brothers are very local to me. These two beers are from Williams Brothers. There's loads of Williams Brothers reviews on the channel, actually. So, yeah, these ones I'm very curious about. Tall Boys. So, yeah. Let me see, let me see what's going on here. Um, computer's going crazy, guys. Just need to get this fixed. Why is it doing this? Something mad is going on with this, guys. Just bear with me, bear with me. There we go. Uh, but yeah, mine would be Ballast Point Victory at Sea. Yeah, I've not... Um, I've not had, I, have I reviewed that? Did that come through? I'm trying to remember. Let me have a little look and see. I've reviewed quite a few beers from Ballast Point. Let's have a look at this. I'm curious to see how their stuff comes out now that they've kind of uh, become um, sort, of, sort of independent again, I guess you could say. But yeah, I've had um, I had High West, and was that not a special version of uh, the Victory at Sea? But I don't think I've ever had the original one. That is a beer that I really uh, need to get a hold of. At, um, at some stage actually but yeah it looks like we have various people watching from different places uh, from different places around the uh, the country so and different places around the world so guys tell me what's the best beer from your country or state that you're watching at the moment tell me that um, oh we've got Carla saying hello <laughs> no it's always good to have Carla see Carla is a very good friend of mine from Aberdeen University primary teacher and uh, I've been trying to get her into beer that's a bit better than Tenants for a while, but so far she's kind of resisted that. Um, she's resi she's been resisting trying anything for anything a bit more adventurous than Tenants. I really want to get Carla in to Pilsner Urkel. I really want to get Carla in to, um, to Pilsner Urkel at some stage. Um, so yeah, P Pilsner Urkel, Carla, we need to get you onto that actually. So yeah. That is something we definitely need to do. One thing we should actually do as well, Carla, is take you to, um, we should take you from, um, we should take you to the, the tenants experience through in Glasgow. That could be something for you. And then you can try some of the, the tenants craft beers through, um, through at the Drygate Brewing Company next door. That's definitely something that we should look into. Um, yeah, let me see what's going on here. Oh, this is going crazy. I don't know what's going on with my inter with my computer at the moment. It's just being a wee bit laggy. Pain. Pain in the ass. But um yeah, Carla from Maine US. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not forgetting about that actually. Definitely forgetting about that. Um yeah, I like Pilsner, but I'm not sure if I've tried that one. Neck oil I like too. Ah, neck oil is the session IPA from uh neck oil is the session IPA from beaver town so that's interesting that you like some beaver town stuff their beers used to be very very hoppy and very crazy actually so that is that is a step forward carla definitely that's a step forward there's another question for you guys what was the first more um craft beer that you got into let us know about that and we've got greg joining us now so there we go how greg you? how's it going oh yeah we all right i'm doing well doing well oh, just uh, luckily, surviving yeah, I know it's all good. It's all good. Nice to have you on again. It's been a wee while. Something's not right at my end. We can hear. I can hear you all right. Can I hear you absolutely fine? All right, cool. Yeah. I'll fix. Just don't worry about it. Get a good flight over. Yeah, that was good. I actually ended up talking to, uh, ended up chatting away to an investment banker guy. <laughs> um, um, it was quite interesting because he does the he does the kind of job that I will be quite likely to do after next summer so it was interesting to to do that but otherwise it was, it was fairly easy you know yeah. how are things down in uh how are things down in carlisle not too bad not too bad uh tier two down here so i can still get to the pub if i have a meal so um it's not too bad my favorite pub's still shut um it's been shut since it reopened but other than that i can't i can still we've got brew dog for the time being although i'm hearing that's going to shut in the new year they're all going. Ah. Into hibern they're, they're all going into hibernation for a month. Um, but we've got football, so 
got that to look forward to on Boxing Day, so can't complain. Oh, nice. That's yeah. pretty good then. You can at least go and see. Yeah, is it, see my team. Is it, blue? is it blue that Carlisle United play in? Yeah, yeah. We don't see the colour really because we spend a lot of time looking at the ball in the air, so I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't show what colour we wear, but yeah, we're in blue. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Is it, head, is it head tennis? Oh, yeah. We're the best at it, <laughs> but yeah. Do you want any beers tonight? Um, my dad bought me. I asked my dad um, earlier on to go to Tesco uh, to get me. Uh, I asked him if I needed an adapter for my computer, and I asked him to get me a double. I asked him to get me a double, a double punk. Yeah. But he ended up. He, he went to Morrison's instead, and he gave. He brought. He came back with this, <laughs> the regular <laughs> punk I gave. Oh, um, but yeah, no, I was hoping to get a. I need to get a double punk and. A, um, the triple one. Yeah, I need to get the. Is there a triple punk now as well? well? Well, you've got punk, and then you've got punk or G, which oh no, sorry, yeah, there's triple punk as well. I was getting mixed up with the Hazy James, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's triple Hazy. Sorry, yeah, I was getting mixed up. Yeah, yeah, it's double punk and it's triple Hazy. Yeah, it's too easy. There's too many names the same. They just double everything now. That's their trick. Are we? I don't know what to I do. Know, just let's just double it. Yeah, I mean that's what I've seen in Sweden a little bit as well. As a few of the breweries have. Uh, They've been doing, um, you know, uh, there was the double Narangi, the triple dry hopped, uh, amazing haze, and all of this kind of thing. But uh, yeah, no, and the, but at the moment I'm, I need to, I'll go and open that in a little bit. I've just been on the cola, and I've also been having my, I've been enjoying my Easter eggs as well. Still got my Easter eggs because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been home. Mad. Yeah, my mum still, my mum's, I took my mum. Uh, she didn't get my sister and I Easter eggs one year, so we just annoyed her, and now she buys us two Easter eggs each every year. <laughs> So, so, 29, 29 and 34 and we're still like uh, no. so, if you, so how, yeah. how long how long are you back for well in the ideal world it was supposed to be until the 13th right um right. but it's now been shifted until the 10th so yeah shifted until the 10th so we'll see we will we will just need to see you know yeah it's crazy isn't it that's just kind of how it goes, unfortunately. But um, yeah, that's it. That's it. How is it? Uh, are you are you still able to work and stuff, or are you on the furlough? Yeah. Just no, I'm, I've I've worked from home all the way through, but I'm I'm finishing Christmas now, so you can get I can get stuck into these biggers now. Really, I'm on the uh, equilibrium at the minute, straight out of Middletown, Triple IPA. Oh, like, nice! Really good. Really good. Yeah, is that I as in the equilibrium? Uh, House of Trembling Madness. So, depending how long you you here for, I, I would I would check them out because their their site is amazing. Like ah, House of Trembling Madness. Yeah, the, I, I'm the, checking, yeah I went Rob's, in there. It's Rob's, it's Rob's way. Yeah. Yeah, I actually was in there. I went and did when I was doing my teacher training and stuff. I actually looked at going to York Uni because I thought York would be quite a nice city. And then yeah, it was the House of Trembling Madness. So. I think they've got yeah. two, two, um, two in York now, but I'm not sure which one I've been in. I think I, um, because I did an unboxing about a month ago, and, and Rob pulled us up on it, saying like, "What, what, what kind of place have you been in?" There's same four taps, there's twenty, and I'm like, "Oh, well, I must have went in the wrong one." So I oh. don't know, <laughs> but yeah, it's really good, massive, massive, massive range, and they do, um, they do all the traditional beers as well. They've got a lot of like German and Belgian beers, and then they've got. All the craft range as well, so it's re and it's competitively priced as well, so I quite like them. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I need to, I need to have a little look at the. Mm. See, I'm just looking on it. It's got them all in the, um, yeah, sort by brewery. This could be quite interesting. Um, oh, they've got eight wired Allagash. It's a lot of stuff on here because that's. I mean, I wasn't sure. As I say, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be home for because I wanted yeah. to try and stick to the Scottish beers, and then, um, I've got my. Irish import guy giving me some Irish stuff as well, so I wasn't sure if I was going to have so much time for English stuff this time. But I might make a wee. Or I just need to try and watch that I don't order too many IPAs and stuff because um, if I can't review them, um, I can just if it's stouts and things like that, I can just leave them and then yeah. get them in February again. You know, that's the thing. But then probably in February there'll be more stuff that I want to try from like Tempest and all of this yeah. as well. So. Yeah. It's a constant oh. battle. It's a constant battle. <laughs> totally, I do like Tempest. We get, we do get quite a lot of their beers um, down here. They are one mm. of the common ones. I get, I get a lot of Tempest. I get a lot of Overtone from Scotland. 
we used mm-hmm. to get a lot of Fallon, we used to get a lot of fine ale, but I don't see as much because I don't think they're they're dropping off at the moment. But um, we, we do used to see a lot of Tempest, so yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah, I need to try and get one thing I do need to try and get this time would be a few things from pe- uh, Pressure Drop. Yeah, I've I've had very little by them. I I, I was. I was saying this today. Everything I've had by them has been really good, but I think I've only ever had about two or three by them. But they've been another one which have been hard to source up here. But Trembling Madness do get a lot in of them, so I should really put a bit more effort into to get some. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I'm not. I know that the guy that I used to get beers from in Durham, he's getting a lot of Sonnet Forty Three stuff in just now. That seems to be quite popular. Yeah, uh, they they've. I think they've changed the brewer. They were originally. Um, a traditional brewer um, mm. went very much down the cask route, and then last year they've they seem to have gone down the craft route. Um, I have I had the red one the other week, which was good, and I've got the smoked Russian Imperial Stout in called the Beast. Um, so I've got that for some point over the next couple of weeks. I had mm. the um, they did a one that ripped off Snickers. And it looked like the the Snickers can, but I was a bit unimpressed with it. It didn't taste anything like a Snicker. Whereas um, Dean reviewed one this week, I think, and it was like a Mr. Kipling sour. And he said it was absolutely bang on, so I might have to get that one. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah they are good. Yeah, I think that the IPAs seem to be better from what I've had of them, but no, they are good. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's just difficult to kind of keep track of um mm. of what's of, of everything that's going on. I mean, um it's, this is interesting. I'm sitting at Trembling Madness just now and they've got stuff from Ale Farm, um from in Denmark, and they're actually quite hard to get in Copenhagen these days. I've not right. seen Ale Farm in the shops that I've been in over there. Alpha Delta, I had one of their beers the other day, Bad Seed. Is that the Danish Bad Seed? No, yeah. that'll be the one that uh, that'll be the one the uh, Liverpool way, isn't it? Ah, yeah. Because the other one is it top top rope is the one that Adam talks a yeah. lot about. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one after this one. There we go. There's uh, one there. Oh, let me see. Imp- uh, Imperial Ca- Canadian Destroyer make Maple Peak and Imperial Stout ten percent. That looks like a monster. Absolute monster. Yeah. For you. No, it should be yeah. good. They're, they're all very um, WWF um, wrestling. All related kind of um, beers that go down that route, and when you see there, when you get the cardboard box, it looks like a wrestling ring when you buy off the brewery, and when you look oh, underneath, right. it's got like ladders and chairs on the bottom of the box <laughs> as if it's um, underneath the ring. It's quite clever. Oh yeah, no, that is <laughs> that does sound quite clever. Actually, I've not come across one. Yeah, I don't. Um, I had a couple. I had a couple of theirs off Adam's last box. Um, I had the orange gorse and a couple of the cream cream uh, cream Austins. That, they were very good. Yeah, no, the beers that Adam sent me last time were good. I've still got the two stouts that he, that I've still got the two stouts that he sent me. So I'll need to review those when I get back. Um, I've still got quite a lot of Dutch stuff and a few Estonian things to get through as well, and one or two, one or two Finnish things. I've got the Brazil, a couple of the Brazilians left as well. Um, and a Russian one that I'm curious about, like a double Russian fake IPA. That should be really interesting. Well, that'd be good. Um, so, you yeah, don't, the Brazilian you don't, stuff. You don't see many Russian beers over here. It's only um, AF. That's about all you ever see from Russia, really, over here. I've... Ah, yeah. No, we get we seem to get AF and Zagovar quite regularly. And if you go to Coke, I mean, I ordered just from Beer Dome and they had Bakunin and they had... Um, they had you, you get white you can get white labs in Sweden actually you can get Stam um, mm. in Denmark and um, so yeah no it's, I just I mean um, I quite like to order the stuff through um, the Shiosk in Copenhagen that's a good place to get to get all your different beers um, mm. but yeah it's always interesting because um, quite a few of these Swedish breweries they export beers that they don't release in um, uh, they export their beers. Um, that they don't, they just don't release in Sweden. So you can always just get weird things from uh, from Denmark that you can't get <laughs> Swedish, weird Swedish stuff that you can't get from Denmark. So yeah, cool. oh, cool. that's good. It's always good. But yeah, any intre- Is there any new breweries opened up in uh, in Carlisle recently? We we are very trad. 
where we are. We've only got one brewery in the whole city. Carlisle Brewing Court is the only brewery, and it's just a real old um, brewery. The nearest craft we've got is Fell, which is in Flukeborough, it's, but it's closer to Markham than... Uh, it's right on the border between like Lancashire and and Cumbria. Um, they do they did like a Sabro and Citra IPA, like Raspberry Bill and Avices. So they are they are starting to get in with the modern ops and stuff. Um, but they've got they've got one bar near me in Penrith, which is about ten minutes on the train. So we do tend to go through and try their beers a lot. But other than that, no, it's very uh, real ale. Well, and then going the other side of the border, I would say. You're getting in towards like well, Tempest's fairly near to me, and then it's over to Hexham, way towards up when you're getting like Allendale, and then over oh, yeah. with Newca- I- over with the Newcastle beers. That's probably I- like the nearest. I yeah, no, I've heard of Allendale actually. I've heard about them that they're they're all uh, right. Um, they're they're better on cask than they are um, in terms of the cans, but Newcastle's handy enough. Really, we we do spend a lot of time over in Newcastle. Um, going to like Full Circle and places like that by the river, um, which is like the sister brewery to Wylam. Uh, we, we use those quite a lot. So it's just getting back. I mean, we have we have ventured a lot this year around the country. That's that's one good thing about this pandemic. I've got to places that normally or traditionally I would have just went abroad for my holidays. So mm-hmm. um, like we said, we've been to Perth, Dundee, St Andrews, uh, Bristol, which is amazing for beer. Um, oh yeah, it's a good beer city that for sure. Yeah, um, Southampton, Brighton, Reading. So we've we've kind of Swansea. So we've kind of just used it as a, an opportunity really to go around the country. Um, I've pretty much, I think I've got about seven left of the brew dog bars to do now in the UK, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. I've completed a lot. Um, but Reading was Reading was surprisingly good for beer. Um, they've got um, Phantom Brewery. And what, an oh, amazing, right. what an amazing tap room that is. Um, we went in there, they had about 20 taps, about 10 of their own and then 10 guests. And then they also had an amazing fridge. So I managed, I've been desperate to try um, anything by Emperor's Brewery. And I got the the Nerd Brewing Emperor's Collab in there. The, you're the condition, the maple and uh, coconut imperial stout. Unbelievable beer. Yeah, best best no, beer I mean, I've had this year. And Nerd Brewing are very, very good. They're very oh, good actually. My line's gone again. Um, oh, oh my I can hear you. Early. I can hear you. I can hear you good. I can hear you well. Yeah. Maybe it's my, maybe it's my headset. No, I think I think it's I think it's mine. Um, it came up saying I've got to put a new upgrade on it. Just went crackly a little bit, but now I can hear it again now. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. Aye, uh, but no, I need to. Um, I need to have a wee look through that Trembling Madness stuff. There's some really interesting things. I'm just looking at it there. There's a couple of things from uh, Arbor. I need to try another one of their beers because they were always good. Uh, Rocket Man IPA sounds interesting. Uh, Harry's big on that. Um, is that my little Sabroni on there? He's big on that one. Ah, yeah, because that was the one I saw that and I recognised it. So I'm like, oh. Yeah. That in the basket for later, maybe. <laughs> the, the thing, I, the thing I like about Arbor is it's just that, well, they're so good value with the pint cans. Um, mm. That is the best thing about them. But the beers are good. There's one mm. in uh, Marks and Spencer's that, um, it's a coffee porter or something, a coffee stout. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, right. Dream, is it? That's that's quite good. It's not too bad. That's easily available. So I think it's in most of the Marks and Spencer's if you're going in them when you're over here. Oh yeah, no. I need to, well, I need to see if I can get out. See if I'm allowed out first. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, we'll see. Got... We'll see. What, we'll see what happens with that. But um, yeah. have you got to isolate? Uh, Is that part of the rules? They're saying it's ten days. Uh, ten days isolation. So unfortunately, yeah. I, that's why I did that. I, that was I read that before I came, and I was like, right, I'm going to phone. Uh, I'm going to phone. Uh, Valhalla's go and get that sorted out, and they, thankfully they did it for me. So I was pleased. Yeah. I was pleased about that. I was pleased to be able to to do that. Thankfully, but um, ah, it's a bit it's a bit shite. But I can understand why they're. Uh, I can understand why we've got to do it. So yeah, it does. In fairness, it does seem a little bit pointless now after you know Sweden doing the whole um, you know the whole yeah. just uh, herd immunity kind of thing. So. 
But um, the, the police that are out on the border, like yeah, no, I've seen that. that they... My um, my brother went over to Gretna uh, mm. last weekend, and he said there were about. He didn't get pulled over. He was he was just doing a few errands, and um, yeah, they said there were about. So I think it is genuine. I know, um, like with the football team, they've turned around and said, if you're um, if you're coming from Scotland, they're not going to sell your tickets anymore. So. Mm. It's, um, it's it seems to be genuine that they they are spying and stuff, or at least trying to keep tabs on it. It's very difficult, though. But yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I think the government should have closed the border. Uh, the, the Scottish government should have closed the border earlier because a lot of the spread in England, from what I understand, was the uni students. The uni students yeah. went a bit mental when the restrictions were lifted. So um, yeah, but that's. There's not much you can, you know, there isn't much they can do about it now. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it for sure. But yeah. um, we we'll just need to, we just need to kind of grin and bear it. Unfortunately, at the moment. Yeah, but I, it should I, get better next year. Hopefully, I mean, I, I am open to get abroad next year, but we'll. <laughs> We'll yeah, see. you need to get yourself out to, to Copenhagen at some stage. Um, I, I went um, last Christmas. I went last Christmas. So hmm. we went, we had, um, I got to War Pigs and I went, there was a few of the bars in the, in Copenhagen. It, and then um, we, we got the train out to Malmo for the day. And mm-hmm. I got, I went to the Brew Dog and I went to uh, Malmo Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, uh, that's a good setup in there. Really Malmo good. Brewing Company is very good as well. Actually, it's a shame we didn't know each other at that time because could have come and met and had a beer with you. But yeah, yeah, Malmo really Brewing Company is one of my kind of regular haunts for sure. Um, they've got some. They, awesome, they've got. Some they really had. Good um, stuff. I quite like they got mead, and they had about four them from like Malmo uh, Mead Company. I don't know if they're really. I think. Or, I think they are. I've, I've never figured that out. I mean, yeah. uh, Anders, who um, is the main man there, I've been wanting to get him on for an interview, but just because of this whole um, COVID thing, you know, it's um, it's just been yeah. difficult. It's uh, been difficult to kind of sort to um, to sort that out. But yeah, we'll see how uh, again. We'll see yeah. how that goes. Come the rest of the. Come, well, come when I get back, yeah. or fingers crossed, if I can get back, that's going to be the big thing these yeah. days. Fingers so, crossed. yeah, you have, just you have to go. You might have to go a long way around, will you? Um. Well, I think the thing is, I would fly to Copenhagen. Um. And uh, I've got friends that I can stay within Copenhagen, but the thing is, I've got class that starts again because I'm doing my. I took a year off normal work, if you like, to work online and. Uh, and and do my Swedish course. And I've just finished the first half of the thing, so I need to get back. But they'll pr- they might well end up running these courses by distance or whatever as well. But obviously, distance courses. There's no the other thing I would have issues with is getting the book for the new the new half of the course. Um, mm. So that's never good because we get a lot of exercises and stuff like that to do um, in the Swedish course. But aye. Uh, it's a it's a pain. It is a pain, actually. Um, it's just it's just kind of sod's law that if if you like that um, the uh, that the, the the restrictions changed when um, when just just the day that I was flying. Yeah. But, you know, tip it is typical. Absolutely typical. <laughs> at, least, at least you were lucky to get over. I mean, if it had been if you delayed it a day, you wouldn't have got him, would you? Uh, I wouldn't have thought so, actually. No. Yeah, so, um, in one hand, it's quite good, really. Yeah. Mm. I don't know what your Christmas. Well, I don't know what your Christmas would have been like then. <laughs> I would have just been. I would have just been chilling and then reviewing beers, probably. Yeah. Um, just emptying out that fridge and trying to get through some. Um, that would have been it. <laughs> that that probably would have been it. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not too. That's not too bad a thing. Yeah, not too bad a thing. What have you got planned? Are you just staying in the house? Um, pretty much. Um, we're going to my sister in law's for Christmas Day. We're going in the festive bubble with them. Um, I threatened my brother in law that we're going to do a beer review together, but he's a Foster's drinker, so I don't know what how that'll turn out. But we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give that a go. We think. Um, 
other than that, I'll, probably, I'll be going to the football on Boxing Day, like I said. And mm-hmm. New Year's Eve's that's a write off now this year. I can't well mm-hmm. with all the pubs shut, and so we'll just be staying in for that. Um, uh, just yeah, chilling really. I've got two week off work, so not back until the fourth. So not too bad. Just chilling. Done all my Christmas shopping, so I can just kick back now. Yeah. No, that um, should be quite good actually. Just uh, you can just chill out and relax, you know. Yeah, and... it, it's normally yeah. hundred mile an hour at Christmas, so it might actually not be a bad one. I'm thinking for once, just just to just like kick back. But no doubt, by the m- middle of next week, I'll be bored and saying, oh, "I can't do this and I can't do that." But I was looking at going to Liverpool, I w- but it's probably not wise. Mm, yeah, I mean, I still need to get down there. I mean, I wanted to do a bit. I wanted to do a bit of an England tour and uh, you know come round and visit you guys. Just move between the cities and things mm-hmm. like this, and you know do a little bit of filming with you guys and stuff. But um, well, there's there's only really me and like Adam really who's well and Harry. They're the only ones really who can who can actually go out at the minute because everyone else is in three or four. So oh yeah, yeah. It's pretty crap. I know Craig was saying that his wee girl's presents are all in London hopefully, and stuff. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get back to some kind of normality and we can all go meet up sometime next year and mm. have a few. We'll see. No, that would be that would be good for sure, definitely. It's just a uh, case of sitting it out just now, eh? There's not much else can be mm. can be done. Yeah. But we're getting a few we've had a few comments actually. Let's have a rattle through these. Um probably the Baladin barley wine. Baladin, have you had some Baladin stuff before, Greg? No, I'm not familiar with them. No, mm. we get some of their uh, the, we we get some of the beer of Baladin things through like the local, uh, not the local, the temporary releases in Sweden. Actually, um, I have to say that. I mean, a lot of people criticise um, Sistembo Lager. Like when we had uh, Ricard uh, on last time from Everett Glass, that he hates Sistembo Lager, but. Um, it's uh, I it's a bit of a, it is a bit of a kind of crazy thing that I think you get some of the beers you get, yeah. from there are like really really nice actually. So, um, is is we we you know you can get some really stuff just from random places. We get Russian beer, we get all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's good, it's good. Um, but yeah, the Ita- the Italian beers do tend to be a wee bit pricey. But I think the main problem I think with the Italian beers is they sell them in these big seven hundred mil bottles instead of giving you three thirties or something. Or cans, yeah. I don't think canning is much of a thing in, in Italy at the moment, but Severio, correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think I've ever had an Italian beer that's been canned. Um, one beer that you should try, Greg, if you haven't already, is the Tipo Pills. Birificio mm. Italiano Tipo Pills. Have you ever had that? Oh, 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 my thing's gone again. Oh, sorry, I missed the last bit. I know, I was saying, have you ever tried um, Tipo Pills from... Um, Birificio Italiano. No, no, they won't. I've had. I haven't had much Italian beers, to be honest. Um, I've had that. Was it Birifico Lambrati, the tiramisu, the pastry stout? Mm. I've had that. Um, other than that, it's it's pretty much um, Biridel Borgo for me. I haven't. I haven't really gone in down the Italian route. We don't seem to get a lot of Italian craft beer over here, so. Um, I do, I do. It's one I do need to dig into, really. I think. Mm, yeah, no Italian stuff. I, I want Severio's going to sort me out with an Italian box. I think from his like from northeast Italy. I think I'm going to be curious yeah. to see what those beers are like. Just you know, maybe ten beers or something, all different breweries that are new to me. That's going to be pretty interesting for sure. Yeah. Uh, cheers from Jason and Sarah in Maine for you, Greg. Here you go. Cheers. <laughs> um, Very good. Isn't it? All, isn't all the most, almost all the good stuff? It's, I suppose it's all relative. It is all relative. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, I do find it weird. I think I paid more for the Scottish beers that I've got in there than I would have in Sweden. To be honest with you, and it's weird when Sweden you earn more and things cost more. But some of the crap, the system will like it. It's non-profit, so it keeps the prices of the stuff down. Actually. Yeah. Um, cool. So yeah, no, it's good. Um, probably the first craft beer was uh, Reale from Birificio del Borgo before I, I think I reviewed the Reale 
either that or just know that beer from doing I've, I've, reviews. I've definitely, I've definitely had that beer before. Um, mm. It's very much a very old school West Coast from memory. It's, mm. it's not too bad. Yeah. No, there's some interest. Like some of the Del Ducat. I mean. Lambrati, Del Ducato. Lambrati, from what I understand, were just like a brew pub until fairly recently. Um, they're, they're still very small scale, from what I understand, Lambrati. Um, but, you know, the Italian stuff, uh, there's a lot of sour beers in Italy, from what I gather. Um, and I think the whole thing is with their, the beer, they kind of treat it like wine. It's always the, that's why they do the 700 yeah. mil stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's why they always do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, don't know much about the European craft beer scene. Cheers from Vancouver. Yeah, no, I need to. Um, we obviously sometimes we used to join the Canadian guys' streams and stuff. Not done that in a while. But yeah, I need to get over. I need to go. I've got family in uh, White Rock, in BC. Um, that I need to. Kind of wonder. Yeah, and I need. To, I was there when I was like four, so I don't really remember it. But we used to go to the the states a lot. And my dad loves going to the states, and um, I had the chance to go out to. California with my mum and dad, but I kind of regret it now <laughs> that I didn't yeah. go. I was just a bit tired of um, the states when I think it was in my first year of uni. They asked me if I wanted to join them to go to the to California, and I said no because I was tired of the states and I went away to Europe. And I kind of regret that now. That's a somewhere that I want to to go at some stage. So um, yeah, oh well, that's it. Um, but you know, I'd like to get to to BC and Alberta and have a little look around. From what I gather, like Manitoba and Saskatchewan are quite flat. There's not a lot there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd like to go and see east the the east as well, like Nova Scotia and uh, Quebec and uh, Ontario as well. It'd be quite cool. Um, yeah. yeah, that's definitely one for the future. We'll see. Cheers from Maine. Cheers, Ollie. Yeah, <laughs> it's Greg. Yeah, oh, I've got Craig watching as well. It's always nice. Hi, Craig. Uh, Nice to get always nice to get Craig watching. Craig might join us. Uh, I guess Craig might join us a wee bit later. See what he's doing. Um, it's chaos down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I can imagine. Be. Can imagine. Uh, Davor looks like most of Europe is chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably is. Um, oh, we've got jo yeah, yeah. Um, nice to see. Recently tried Stieg Stieg Stiegel. That would be Stiegel from Salzburg. If you had it before. Um, I think we get that in System Lager, but it's one that I've never got around to reviewing, actually. I do need to... It's not a um, bad Heller's Lager. Um, I've mm. had the Grapefruit Radler that they do as well, and it is one of the best Radlers I've ever had. Mm. Yeah, I mean... Really good if you like Radlers. I've never, I never really got into Radlers that much, to be honest. Um, yeah, but, I like um, them in the summer. Um, they just so easy to drink so but yeah that's a good one yeah no i mean um yeah i need to try and get into i never got into radler or shandy or anything like that i do need to have a wee go at at some of these things and see see what we can see if i can review a few of them i've just i've never i need to try some of these seltzers as well i've never i don't even really know what a seltzer well, is come to think don't, don't tell adam he'll, he'll have a hissy fit if you're going to start reviewing those um, no, they, no, they are they're, they're all right. I'm not a big fan of them, um, but they're just it's just the first time you pour one out of a can. It just looks like clear water, and it, it threw me. I had um, I had Oscar Blues last January for the first time. I tried a few of their beat theirs. Um, they're very, um, you know, that flavour. Like if somebody's dropped a paracetamol in a, in the, in water, like an alka seltzer or something, they're very much like that. Um, the aftertaste mm. for me, I, I really don't like them. But, yeah, I suppose you've got to get it on the channel. Yeah, we'll see. So, see, I'm not in it for the views. Not in it for the views or anything. I'm just, I just review stuff that I find interesting. If people like yeah. it, why not? Eh? Yeah. That's, I, think, I think that's what it's all about instead of kind of chasing numbers. But, ah, oh, totally. we'll see. Yeah, no, that's it for sure. Um, I, <laughs> I will need to... Oh, oh what's going on? I think it's been a pain. Maybe it's my internet that's been a bit weird, but yeah. Uh, it's probably me. It's always the same in my house. Ah, right. 
Oh, that's good. I, I think my internet's actually quite good this time because my, my mum and dad don't use it for very much and I had to phone them up and shout at them last time because I, I had a guy trying to tell me, I remember a few years ago, I had a guy trying to tell me that 500 kbs was fast and I was like, no, it's me. <laughs> I was like, what are you on, mate? What are you on about? It's, and it was... Um, it was an it was a it was actually an Indian guy because that was I think I think they're on Sky now they're on Sky broadband now but they were originally on BT so we got put through to India and this guy was trying to tell me like five hundred kb kbps was fast and I was like you know I was like no it, not for here it's not yeah. I was like no it's not. um yeah no it's it's quite funny I just always remember that but yeah um, it's a very saying let's talk about something else what is your traditional sweet stuff that you eat or prepare for Christmas. Here we prepare a putitsa. Putitsa. I don't know what that is, actually. What do you usually have? What kind of things do you do for Christmas, Greg? Um, I like my cheese board and my, like, antipasti. So I'll have a bottle of... I'll get a bottle of pot out and I'll have about three or four different types of cheeses. Get the chutneys mm. going, pickled onions. I love that in the build-up to Christmas. I'll always... I'll have that for my dinner a couple of days and just make like a few things. Christmas Day, the main meal is usually turkey. Um, always a guzzler for the pigs and blankets. Massive on them. I'll eat them till the cows come home. I love my pigs and blankets. Um, my my brother in law is a chef, so he tends to try and go a bit fancy some some years. Some years he might just do a soup, and then other years he'll do something fancy with an avocado or something. I don't know. Or he'll dip the carrots in orange juice and try and think he's Jamie Oliver or um, <laughs> some, something like that. Um, and then we'll have for dessert. My wife will usually make the make a homemade like cheesecake or something, and um, we'll do that. But yeah, I kind of like I like the days after Christmas where you've got all the leftover food and you just make random concoctions up with whatever you've got knocking about so like mm. turning like brussels sprouts into bubble and squeak kind of things and um i love all that really just getting a bit turkey curries and doing that the day after but mm. what about you oh we just we usually we've always got the turkey or i think we've had pork once or twice in the last the last mm. few years um i mean i was in japan i mean we were in japan last I was actually in Japan the last two Christmases. This is my first, it's weird. This is my yeah. first Christmas in Scotland in like three years, actually, because yeah, I went to Japan for Christmas two years ago then as the little guy was being born last year. And uh, then it was, a, this is my first one at home for a wee while. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's it. So, yeah, the last, usually we do turkey, eat a bunch of chocolate. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Um, we always used to have my gran and grandpa over for Christmas, but since they died, it was uh, we always just did it here, and it was uh, it's always quite yeah. nice. It's always quite I've, nice. I've uh, always went. To, I've always went to my mum and dad's most years, and then um, we kind of a couple of years we alternated between my mum's and then my brother in laws, and then this year just with my dad's health and stuff, we're just not going to run the risk. Um, oh, we're yeah. just going to. We're just gonna go. We're going to my brother-in-law's, and then so I'll we'll, I'll get the presents to to my mum and dad at some point, and then uh, and see him through the window. But it's just he's in. Um, it's well. This might interest you. What he's got. Um, he's got a thing called a vad. So he's got like a, it's like a mechanical heart. So oh, right. Okay. Um, he's got this like battery pack. It looks like he's got like a lap, um, like a laptop bag on, on his side, and um, it, it controls the blood flow to the. Uh, around the body so my, my dad um the the blood doesn't pulsate through my dad it just flows as a, and this mm. device controls the flow of the blood through his body so mm. um if if my dad say takes and he can't wet shave for instance because uh, if he takes a nick it the if, if they can't stem the blood flow it can be um, a disaster and um he's got this batteries and i've got like a, a 16 hour life on them so and then you have to switch them around. So they've got like each battery's got like eight hours, and then you rotate the battery so that, and then you've got like two spares on the charge. So if he's in the car ever, I can plug I plug my dad into the um, the cigarette charger in the car so that he's got a charge while he's <laughs> about. He's literally, he's literally like when he's when he's at home, he's he's plugged into the wall when he's at home, and then 
if he like gets up to go for his tea or whatever, he just um, switches off the plug and then puts it into like this battery pack so he can walk around like able really because he had um, he had a few heart attacks a few years back and the the heart was overworking you see so mm. just due to his like immune system as a consequence we don't I can't I've got to be careful with him at the minute. Oh yeah. That's just that's, it's amazing what they can do with some of these. Yeah. Uh, there's only a thousand in the country that's got this device. He's the only person. Yeah. There's there's two people in all of the, in all the Carlisle that's had it, and the other person sadly passed away. And like because mm. my dad's had it for like four years now, he they were like using him as like an ambassador for it, and he was having to like show them what he does and how he changes wires and. And all this kind of thing. It's it's bizarre. when you see him, it, he's he literally he's got wires literally coming out of his stomach. And um, when we had the terrorism a few years back, oh, I was yeah. going about, I was going about with my dad, and my dad's walking around with a battery pack with wires coming out of him. And we had the armed police in the city, and I'm like, seriously, mate, he's not a terrorist. Um, you don't have you don't have to worry about him. He's not gonna he's not gonna do anything. But they were looking at him because. All these, like they say, the lights were running up and down on the sides, and people were going, uh, going a bit crazy about it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh. Oh man, oh no, oh it's uh... <laughs> that's quite a story. Like, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's I always think when you get wee little, quir- you get wee quirky things like that that are just a bit mental, you know. It's oh, always yeah. good. It's always good. <laughs> I. Oh. Oh no! I've got a few more things in there. Um, I swear to saying, um, I never know how to pronounce his name. Sword, in this sword, I I don't know. Um, Italian beer, the White Pony microbrewery is very interesting. Does that guy not Gypsy brew it? I'm sure he's. Is that not a Belgian guy in Italy that Gypsy brews or some? There's some. I haven't heard. Mm, that's heard a Gypsy. The White Pony's a Gypsy brewery. I know that. I didn't know if they were... Is it a Belgian guy that lives in Italy or something like that? Either that or it's an Italian maybe guy that name, lives... Maybe it's named after the Deftones album. Maybe. Who knows? Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard that they are good white pony, actually. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Good to see you back in the motherlands. Don't know when I'll get back to Germania for the 80 cent beers. <laughs> oh, yeah, he loves his... He, uh, he absolutely loves his... Uh, East German beers. I always see the pictures every day. <laughs> the German beer is good. Uh, it's always good. Hungry is shite now. <laughs> yep. I'm off for food. Merry Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> awesome. Um, hello, mate. Love. Absolutely love your work. Don't get the credit you deserve. I think people will, uh, people will find you and you progress into a top YouTuber. Do you think they should introduce oil into fake taxi videos? <laughs> <laughs> you know what fake taxi is, don't you? No, I've not seen that. No, I don't oh, know what that it's, is. It's it's a porn channel. Oh right. <laughs> 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 oh dear. I've been waiting for Big G from um I've been waiting for Big G from Leith to come back. Um were you on the feed the feed that time? There was a guy oh, I forget what don't his name is so. now. But there's a guy who watches the channel from uh from from Leith and he always signs his comments every uh every comment big G big G from Leith Big G and Sunny Leith. <laughs> <laughs> I love his comments. Yeah. I love his comments. They're always great. But um yeah no Liam is uh, I've not I've not watched that actually but um yeah. but no it's so as I've always said I'm not in it for the numbers. I'm not in it for the numbers. Uh I just enjoy it and it's like meeting yeah. people like Greg and all that that's uh that's what makes it, I think. Like having beers with you and Harry and Rob and all that. It's all just a bit of fun. Don't really I couldn't give a toss what how many subscribers and stuff. My videos yeah. are always gonna have like I, I mean, I review beers from Sweden, so you've got a limit, you know, you've only got ten million people that can that, that probably yeah. can get a hold of these beers, so it's a small audience anyway. Yeah. But um, I mean I mean I, I started doing this what, eight, nine months ago in the first lockdown out of pure boredom. I'd, it was, I'd been um, like mulling it over for a couple of years of do I don't I, and then I was just bored one day and I thought, I'm going to do this. But the best thing that I found out of doing it, not only just like me and all you lot, is my mates, like back in Carlisle, they'll just randomly send me messages going, oh, have you had this? What do you think of it? 
and people who who I didn't think were really into the beer are either getting into the beer or are just like wanting to like really talk about it and and, and that's what I've really it surprises in one way and like my brother who who I just assumed was a, a Foster's drinker was, has been like sending us oh have you had this one have you had this what do you think of this and it's 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 amazing the people who are into the beer that you don't even think are into the beer that's what's really opened my eyes to it but no I've really enjoyed doing it it's, it's good fun yeah no that's it i mean that's one of the things that i like about it i've had people in australia and new zealand and stuff show me around and take me to places and say yeah, this is where I, where I do these are the breweries you should check out that's what i like is i just like trying stuff from different places and you know um i always wanted my videos to be a kind of yeah you know a format where it was like my time went into researching the beer and i was i never wanted to do fancy edits and things like that and uh, yeah. And all of this, I can never be bothered with that because it takes. I don't. I think it would take away. I, I'd rather put my time into the beer than into the yeah. video, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Well, I, I just. I mean, I I couldn't do all the editings. I just open the can, get the, the video done in four minutes, and then move on. I just. I, I, but it is. I know you like to go into it all, but I'm just like. It's always just been me of just my initial thoughts. Whereas if some people are going to do lots of edits, I'm like. What are you taking out, or what are you you know? I don't know, but it's yeah. Each each their own. It's it's got to, you've got to do what works for your own channel, and you've got to review the beers that you want to review as well. If you're just doing something to, you know, chasing numbers, at the end of the day, you're spending your own money doing it, and it's you know, and your own time doing it. I'd rather drink the beer that I want to drink. Just, and I do. I will drink shite. I mean, on a Friday afternoon, I always do my challenges. Just. Because I quite enjoy the fact that somebody will say, "Drink Kestrel, drink Carlsberg Special Brew," and I'm like, "Right, I'll do it. I'll do it this week because it's like as a one-off because it's a bit of fun and it's a beer that I would never normally drink. So um, I don't mind doing it, like I say, once a week. But I wouldn't want to just chase chase doing it all the time. It's just it's not for me. But each for their own. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, it's it's. I think that's the thing is I've almost felt in the la over the last couple of months it's been a bit of a chore because I've been publishing like two a day just to try and get through all the stuff that I have. Like mm. I had, um, you know, Riku um, in Finland asked, I had to ask him to just, he's got a load of dark beers ready for me and he said, just tell me when you want me to send this box and I'll get a couple of IPAs to put in it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, cool. But um, I've just had to delay because... Um, I've ended up with so much and it's almost felt like a little bit of a task over the last little while. And I'm just like, Oh, um, and that's not what you want. That isn't what you want at all. You want yeah. to have that. But, yeah. um, and I've just been busy with work. My schedule's pretty hectic. I only really get Thursdays off at the moment. Uh, well, I've got a couple of weeks off obviously to recharge, which is quite nice. But when my Swedish class was going, I was only really getting Thursdays off because I work quite intensely over the weekends. Um, and then yeah, classes during the week and stuff. So yeah, that's the that's the thing at the moment. So mm. yeah. but yeah. we'll see. I need to. I, I, and I kind of did. I brought it on myself because I saw the chance to get some Brazilian beers. <laughs> um, so um, well, I, well, I went for that. Um, I went for that Estonian box after Harry opened it. I thought the chance to get Estonian beers over here and those those breweries. I thought I'm going to jump on that. So I've started. I've started on those now. It's it's good so far what I've had of it. So Yeah, you're in for a treat with the the Estonian stuff. I've been very impressed. Um yeah, Leia what like Leia, Sori and things like that. I've had some really good Estonian beers. I've still got quite a few big boys sitting there. Yeah. Um I was quite gutted because I went to Puasta and filmed the interview with um with uh, with the guys down there and it was like um you know, it was just, it, it was crazy. Just, um, he wanted to give me like one of each of the silver series. And I was like, oh, I can only really take four or five. Yeah. So uh, I was gutted because he was going to, he was literally like, what beers do you, he literally said to me, like, he's like, tell me what beers you want and I'll give you a bottle of them. <laughs> good, good. So it was, um, the, he was, he was went, an awesome guy. Yeah. I went to the Sorry Tap Room in um, Helsinki when I was mm. over there. Um, that was, that was quite impressed. We don't, the only real, you see a lot of, um, Poyala over here and then you get the odd tanker knocking about and the odd sorry so um, mm. and I have had a couple of poo has there was a B52 box about maybe two years ago that was that had a couple of them in um, but other than that you don't really see any so 
I just thought I'm going to jump on that. And like I said, I had um, I had a black currant Berliner today. I can't remember what the brewery was called. P P T was it? Um, Petal. Um, that was quite nice. So, have you published it? Um, no, it no, your... no. I've just no, no. I just I've literally just had it this afternoon. So it'll probably be coming out at some point this week. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to. Yeah, I think my Scottish reviews. I'll maybe start publishing them on Christmas Eve because I always had a bit of a reserve, you know, and just chose what I wanted to upload. Yeah. But I'm actually just kind of going day by day at the moment. Um, so yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I just need to polish off my my Dutch stuff, and then after that, I need to sort out with Riku and then Severio. And I've got a guy in Austria that wants to to sort out some stuff, so that'll be an interesting. Cool box as well and i'll probably only do the three before the summer um but you know i want to get back down to one review a day i want to get back down to one a day because that's yeah. it's just as i say i've had a lot of good beer and you don't want to waste it you know i, I don't drink outside of the the reviews i don't drink yeah. anything outside of the reviews that's why you know i come on these streams and stuff and unless you know it's like a collaboration review or whatever i yeah. don't um i don't drink the beer um yeah, it's yeah. just because I've had so much over the last few months. Um, but no, we'll see. Yeah. So what... Um, probably, I've probably you... drink too much, but yeah. Uh, I, just, I, I actually feel tired. <laughs> I feel... To, see, to be honest, that's the thing for me. If you could if you could do these beers with the same flavours without the booze in them, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. Yeah. I'd still drink them, probably. Um, yeah. yeah. No, that's it. Um, but where are you thinking for your abroad holiday? Where are you thinking oh, to go? It's gone crackly again. Sorry, what was that? Just saying, where do you think? Where are you thinking to go for your um, your abroad holiday? Um, well, we were due to go to Malta last year. That got cancelled. Um, mm. So I was hoping to to get to a few of the craft breweries around there. Um, uh, but we probably will have a summer holiday. So I would imagine it'll be like. Um, an island in Spain or somewhere like that but we were due to also we were hoping to go to Ohio last year um, just mm. to get the get the brew dog done but then I was looking at going to like um, Hoof Hearted and um, other breweries in the area so um, it's quite a big scene around there and going into Cincinnati and stuff and um, there's a beer reviewer who's well he's only just started well he's, he's called a beer a day with TK and he's he's doing a different. He's, he reviews like mainly Ohio beers. So I've been oh, like, right. what I've been watching him and uh, interacting with him. And um, yeah, there's a, quite a lot of um, breweries in the area that I want to get to. So Ohio is big on my list. Um, mm. My wife turns like my wife's got a big birthday in a couple of years time. So I want to put I want to do something for that as well. So we'll probably go somewhere for that. So. Um, mm. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's just waiting really until it, um, until it all calms down a little bit. I don't. I don't really want to be in a situation. I don't want to go on holiday just so that I and have to self isolate. You know, when I come home and spend two spend two weeks in my house, it's not too bad because I can work from home. So um, the work the work side of things isn't an issue. But it's just it's just the fact that you're fairly trapped in your own four walls. Really, I'd, I'd rather not do it at this moment in time. But uh, we'll see. We'll, hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm confident. Come like June, July time, we'll be. I'm going to say back to normal, but I mean in terms of commuting, we might have to wear masks and hand sanitise and whatnot. But mm. I, I think we'll be getting back to normality. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. We need to see. Hopefully, this vaccination hopefully. program does the trick. But uh, you can never guarantee with these things. You can never actually guarantee with that. So that's it. That's just how it goes. Yeah. But um, I know. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We'll uh, we'll be able to have a wee. Yeah, but you've got away a couple of times this year, so you haven't done too bad. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, my plan's to be in the States, and I'm just hoping that's not going to have to risk. Because the main reason for going out to the States was my friend's wedding. Um. So she's. I need to. I actually can't remember what date she's getting married on, but my flights are definitely, <laughs> my flights are definitely in the right time. Um, so I need to start kind of planning that because I wanted to go down to Texas and visit a few friends. Um, 
and um, I've got a friend in Colorado who lives in Boulder near Denver and he's like oh you need to come here and do some of the Denver stuff so that's I'm definitely game for that so I need to look at booking a few domestic flights and stuff but I'm reluctant to do that because the you know if I lose the money I mean, it's yeah. not great money to lose but still at the same time if you have to reschedule and all that pish it's, it's a pain in the arse yeah totally. um, so yeah no that's I'm definitely looking forward to that being able to go down there and film a little bit and um do a few more things but um yeah oh, good that would be good, pretty good. cool if we can get that to uh to to work out you know um i want to get back to chicago as well so i've got my friend um i've got my friend jesse there who's been following the channel for uh for a good uh america's, number of years america's just i've never been it's uh, well until um about 10 Ten, twelve years ago, I'd never been abroad in my life. Um, mm. When I was when I was a child, like my parents just did UK holidays, so um, I'd never been abroad. And then I, I, can't, I went, I went with the lads to to Ibiza only because Carla and I were playing in Ibiza. Um, they had a pre-season tour, so we went went out to Ibiza. And then after that, it's just been it's where I've I've been I've pretty much done all this kind. I've done like fair, uh, fair, not fair. I've done Iceland, Norway. Um, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Cuba, Dominican Republic. Went to mm. Mauritius for my honeymoon. So kind of, I've been a bit of a late, a late developer on that sense. But I'm making up for last time. But yeah, I do. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, it's good. That oh, we've got Jake joining us. Didn't Nick? Jake, hello. hello. Didn't realise you were coming. Awesome, nice <laughs> to have you. That's right. I've d done a couple of reviews, so I thought I'd uh, thought I'd jump on and say hello. Ah, no, it's good. How are things for you? Yeah, just chugging along <laughs> as, yeah, as, chugging as along. best we can. <laughs> you need to watch when you're saying chugging. It means something slightly different in Scotland, I think. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah. It's oh, a yeah. wank. <laughs> oh, well, by, well, save a point. Does it? <laughs> does it mean that in England as well? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. No. I thought a chugger was... Um, one of those people who stands in the town selling your um, charities. Yeah. That's what we call them. Yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> Ch charity muggers. Try, try to get your direct debit. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, who knows? Now, in, in Sweden, it's you get the hey hey's, they wave the cup at you and they try to get you to put the. It's, it's, it's weird in Sweden that they still do it because, like, in Sweden, they have to use his cash. It's all card now. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's so, good. So you get beggars with a uh, chip and pin machine. <laughs> you know, ah, they've, they've not started that. They haven't started that yet. Um, but you know, they say, it's just weird. They sit outside the system while I get trying, hoping to get all the drunk people. And yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. It is good. <laughs> so how um, how are things going for you, Jake? Are they going okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. not bad. I'm I'm come towards the end of my. 30 beers for 30 years thing and wish I never did it <laughs> <laughs> trying to put out this many videos in such a short space of time it's uh no I'm not used to it <laughs> oh yeah because you do the ed you do a bit of editing and stuff don't you so yeah 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 see that that was my thing I was like if I'm doing this I'm just gonna do it like I don't yeah. I can't I couldn't be asked for the editing so I, I, I can do it painted myself into a corner with that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was my thing. I was like, if I'm doing the, if I'm doing this, um, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it in a way that I don't have to um, edit so much and things. But uh, yeah, no, it's worked out. It's yeah. worked out quite nicely. No, it, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah. I, I like doing it because I like just pissing about. Um, oh yeah, no, I, like, I do like your videos for that. I like you just you're silly. Like, this thing is, I think Rob summed it up quite nice. It's like I just like watching you being silly on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's essentially why I started the whole thing. And then because I, I think I've said it before on loads of streams, but like I thought I had an original idea. I was like, oh, I'm gonna start making these beer videos on YouTube. <laughs> so I started doing I, them the, the way I wanted to do them. And then all of a sudden I was like, fuck, people have been doing this for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was honestly the same. When I started, I thought I had a novel idea. And then it was, and then it was, I came on and I think it was raw. Because I, I, I think I had that discussion with Rob in one of the last ones. I thought I was like generation two of the 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 kind of beer tubers mm -hmm. within um, Scotland and England and stuff like that. Because, um, 
but then there was but Rob was like it's about four or something like that apparently yeah. he thought I was like generation four because it was me um it was me Adam and uh are both of them Adam actually Adam Parker and what's beer beer reviews his name again what's his name uh Brett no be, uh bear beer reviews who went to work at Adam uh, at, at, at Atom <laughs> what was his name yeah. Jack, his name is Jack. Jack, that's it. Jack yeah. Walker, is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But he went to work yeah. at Atom, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. where you get the Adam thing from. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's yeah. probably it. To be honest, yeah. But um, I know it's quite. Uh, it was kind of. I still need to try some of his beers. Actually, um, the Ath- who's he working for now? Because he's not working at uh... Uh, Love Lane now. Um, oh right, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, no, I liked his the ones that were at Lovely and were pretty good actually. I enjoyed the Lovely and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was Adam sent me a few of those actually, come to think of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need to get I need to sort out a box for Adam and send that back. I've got it's just it's a bit of a pain in Sweden actually. Um because you know you've got the monthly release every month. So I don't you I can only send Adam stuff off the shelf and see Stembo lag it. And then you're a bit if it's IPAs and things, you're like, right, how long has that been there? Um because there's only you know you only get fresh releases like once a month or whatever, yeah. Um, and then you know you've got no idea if they're any good or not, and you have to wait. I order them on the first of the month, and I get them roughly about the tenth. So I would need to figure something out, like I have something out to to sort Adam out. It might even yeah. just be what well, I might even just I might I need to figure that out. It annoys I, my I brain. Just got them out of box. I because like he sent me one earlier on in the year. And mm-hmm. oh, and but it's just one of those things that I'm like I'll have to forego having beer to send him a box because like, I've got a a budget <laughs> oh, yeah. that I can that I can sort of afford to spend on beer a month sort of thing. So like um, I need to sort of I, well I might I I'll probably need to do what he does where he's because he, he's like collects them up, doesn't he? And then mm-hmm. once he thinks your box is full, he'll he'll send it to you sort of thing. So I'll probably need to do the same as him, but I'm not as organised as him. <laughs> yeah, that's what the thing is in Sweden. A lot of them are IPAs and stuff. Um... And it's kind of, I mean, it'd be easier to send Adam like two boxes of 10 or something rather than a box of 20. Um, but the thing the thing I could maybe do is send him it and just, you know, 10 for him, 10 for Peter, and then do it again later. Could just do that. Watch, watch us all send him them at the same time as well. I own a box as well, so that's... That's three boxes, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. All on the oh, same I'm... day, try and calculate it. So it's all, all one delivery driver. Just, yeah. Just, just to troll them, yeah. <laughs> just use your three boxes. Cheers, cheers, Adam, for being so generous. Now sort sort this lot out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I need to... I'm, yeah, I'm, I need I'm, to... I'm, I'm drinking this fine premium ale tonight. I'm, what I'm, is I'm... that? What is it? Is it a lager or what is it? It's a, a lager. It is a lager. Yeah, seven point five percent. They call it a pilsner style lager, but. I... <laughs> It's a pretty strong pilsner, um, but it's uh, I've had it before, and I remember it, this is just like incredibly bland. For like seven point five percent, I thought it was going to have a little bit of sort of something about it, like more than. But it's just it tastes like a slightly warm, like as in war, like a warming feeling, like macro lager, mm. which, is, which is what it what it is, I suppose. Higher ABV macro lager. Aye, well that's it. It's uh, aye, it's just a case of. Um... I, I've I've seen it a few times in Tesco, but not for a wee while. It had a different label, I think, when I saw it last time. Yeah, it's one of those weird because when I was doing the review, I was like, I I, I sort of wanted it to be shit, <laughs> so <laughs> it gives you like a like a better reaction and all that sort of thing. And I was like, but like, it's even worse than that. It's bland, <laughs> so it's not even like it's terrible. <laughs> it's just uh... <laughs> yeah, it's just nothing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's mm. it. I need to I, I need to as I, I was telling Greg earlier, or I think I was saying. No, I was telling Greg, sorry, my, my, I always mess up time. I always mess up time. I suppose that happens when you're looking at stars that are like billions of years old. What does a fucking hour matter, you know? But um it's like uh I, I wanted to try I want to try the double punk and the um what do you call it? The um the funk punk as well. And I need to see if I can get a hold of that, you know, the the modern the brew dog modern times one and I need to see about getting a hold of that one for obvious reasons. Um but yeah, no, I need to. I need to get a couple of the supermarkety ones in as well. I would think, yeah. Do they still the do Modern Times one, Greg? Um, yes, yes. 
They do, they do that one, and they also do one for um, British Airways, which I think is similar. Oh, um, hmm. but I'm not, I, can't, I think I'm, I think it's the same beer, but they rebranded. I might be wrong, but that that Modern Times is still doing the rounds in Tesco's. Mm, okay, one that I need to get actually is uh, Mikeler have one that they do for Scandinavian Airlines, um, and yeah, you it. can only get it. In, you can only get it on two places. You can get it in. Uh, I don't know if they put it through the Mikeler Beer Club, actually. Maybe they did. Peter would be the one to tell you about that. Where is Peter tonight, by the way? He needs to get his arse on. Yeah. I had it, I had it when I flew with... Um, mm. Was it was it Finnair? Mm. When I went to Helsinki. I've definitely had it. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's decent. Yeah, no, because you can get it in the Mikeler Bar in Copenhagen Airport. But um, that was shut down when I was in the airport. It was closed. Everything was basically closed in the airport. Shops, everything. Um, do, do you do, talk about like air, airplane beer? Do you remember a couple of years ago when um Tuo did like a whole video series about that they, they were making like this dehydrated like powdered beer, and it was for like the use on flights. So like that you could bring these sachets on, and then just tip water into it, and it t like turned it into beer. Do you do you remember seeing those? What um, happened to that? That was like a crazy. That's a crazy idea. Because <laughs> oh, they were doing it with some German company or something, were they not? Um, yeah, like dehydrated yeah. beer, like you know, like how like a noodle packet, like it's all the flavour and <laughs> like it's a noodle instead of like beer. Mm -hmm. Sounds weird. Really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's you guys talking about it and like McKellar and airplane things. I was like that just suddenly came back into my head, but I've not heard anything other than those couple of videos. They probably did it as a bit of a publicity boost and. We're making dehydrated beer. <laughs> It'd be quite an interesting idea if you could if you could pull that off. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that would be interesting. That It'd would be quite be... It'd be, They'd have to put like the same stuff that that are in like Barocca <laughs> or something like that to make it like all carbonated. Yeah, no, it would be quite. An, it would definitely be. That would definitely be something I'd be interested in for sure. <laughs> but ugh, who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, no, I've never seen anything more of that, even in Copenhagen. Um, I was in, I actually have two out and about videos I filmed in Copenhagen that I need to edit together and uh, and publish. I went to Meek, the original Mikeler bar and uh, Bruce. So I need to put those videos together and get them on. Um, I think I've been in both of those. Oh, I'd love, is, I'd love is to there, go, is there, I'd love to go there. Is the Mikala one, the original one, do you have to, is it under the stairs? You go downstairs? Yeah, yeah, it's on the way to Warpex from the train station, yeah. Yeah, I think I've been in that one. There's yeah. so many different, um, like, versions that they've got there with, like, because they've got, like, Mexican restaurant bars and stuff and um, Chinese restaurant bars and stuff that you, I, I was kind of, uh, I wasn't sure which one it was, but, yeah, I think I've been in that one. It's quite cool. Yeah, no, because they've got, um, Ramen Tobiru is very good as well, but the one that I need to get to that's an old one that I've just I don't know why I've just never gotten to it is the Mikeler and Friends one because that's Mikeler and Toul that own that. Um, right. But yes, yeah, Steak Berries actually are brew the last Steak Berries review that I published I think it was actually just a few hours ago that that one came out. Let me check. Um, but that was actually brewed at uh, the Toul place in. Uh, yeah, the one the review that I published just a few hours ago at seven, um, that was brewed at Toul City. Um, so yeah, I need to get across there because I think they have got a bar at the brewery in Sveinia. It's an old fruit factory, apparently. So yeah, no, that's definitely something. But yeah, Jake Copenhagen's definitely worth it. Yeah, it it was like it was one of the things because look because ten thirty this year it was one of the things that was on the cards. And then mm. obviously, <laughs> obviously didn't pan out <laughs> Yeah, because I've always wanted to go there. And, I, and it was sort of, um, I, I wanted to try and tie it in with um, NBCC and stuff like that. But uh, in, a, in another couple of years, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's NBCC. And hopefully if uh, I need to, I'll be buying, I'll probably be buying a house or something like that in the next, in South Sweden. So yeah, you've got. You guys will have a place to stay within the next. I need to. I need to figure that out. I need to sort of. I'm kind of just planned up until sort of September at the moment, and I need to decide what I'm doing beyond. You know, beyond September because I need to get out east for a little while as well and see the little guy and things. So, 
uh, yeah, that's that's something that needs figured out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I need to get I need to go back into regular work instead of online work as well. But in fairness, I quite like the freedom of online work, so I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it pays well. It pays. It pays. Um, you know, say I, I could earn a bit more, but I earn uh, a nice level as it is. So I'm not overly bothered about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it would be nice to go. I mean, my I want I want to go and see my uncle in Australia again, actually, which I was think I was toying with. It'd be nice to kind of sit out in the bush in Australia and work online for a wee while, help them out on the the land and things and. Could just sit and order an Australian craft beers for a while. That's another thing that I could do. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's one of the benefits of a remote job, isn't it? Is yeah. You are able to do it anywhere as long as you're able to work with the time difference and all that. Yeah. All that if, stuff. You, if you move around enough as well, you don't need to pay the tax either. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, so, so other benefits too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. If you dot around between different countries, I think you have to be in a country for 180 days before you have to, um, uh, before you have to pay tax. Um, so if you're not in any country for 180 days in the year, you don't need to pay the tax. So, because I know that there's a few, a few, fo- a few friends that I know that were working in the oil industry. They used to always take overtime because they were on like two weeks on, two weeks off rotas. So they always used to do like one. They would go away for six weeks at one stage in the year to take them over the limit because then they didn't have to pay. They didn't have to pay income tax. They just had to pay national insurance. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, that's pretty good, but. Um, yeah, I think my next girlfriend of mine, her aunt, worked. She used to fly to Denmark all the time because she worked for Maersk, I think it was. She was a radio op, so she used just to sit on the rig for two weeks, talk to the ships, talk to the helicopters, and then, um, you know, then go home. <laughs> that was her, that was her job. <laughs> Back and forth for two weeks. So yeah, but I think she paid her taxes in Denmark. Yeah, but uh, oil obviously is on the decline. So yeah. <laughs> yeah you won't be on the rigs anytime soon then. <laughs> but yeah that was one of the things um quite a few of the, the it was a bit weird when i graduated from chemistry that was when the oil price crash happened um i went so i went to australia instead of going into work <laughs> i went to australia and made a good wee bit of money out there and just kind of chilled and then went to sweden yeah it's quite strange how the turns that life can take, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that would have been that would have been an interesting turn if I had ended up on the rigs. I mean, you never know. I could have ended up in Norway instead of uh, Sweden, actually. But uh, yeah, well, and that's, a, that's in a way. an even different base scene to Sweden, isn't it? Norway's got its own set of rules and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of homebrewers and everything in Norway, isn't it? Well, it's the same. It's, it's, I think it's the same in, in Finland, Sweden and Norway, I think, are all roughly the same. Denmark's the freest of them. Iceland's got similar rules. Um, yeah, but Iceland's, Iceland's awesome. Um, that's somewhere I would recommend anyone goes, you know, take 10 days out there, spend like two days in Reykjavik, rent a car, spend maybe five days to drive around the whole island. And then... Uh, no, just enjoy it. There's a few, there's still a couple of places I'd love to do that again. Actually, is just drive around the whole island in in Iceland. Um, there's lots of really interesting places um, there. There's it would have been quite cool to go to Iceland on like a study exchange, but some of the places you can go, you're literally in the middle of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I think the Iceland, the Icelandic government have got an interesting thing that they do. They've got their offices in random wee towns and stuff like that um, to give the local population jobs and stuff. So I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, places like Siglafjord and stuff like that. So, yeah. But, but Greg, where did you go in Iceland? Which whereabouts did uh, you go? I just went, I went to Reykjavik, but they had, um, there was, I was talking in a bar when I was over there and they were saying, um, like seventy percent of the country lives in Reykjavik, so and it was and when when they were asking me like what do you do for a living, I says oh I'm I'm a civil servant, I work for the government, and they were like oh um, oh the money you'd be earning over here would be absolutely astronomical and stuff, and I'd be like 
and then when they start and when you start working it out, it, it does sound crazy, but then when you when you wait up with the cost of living, it's 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 just got a balance in it. I mean food and food and food and drinks expensive, your heating's cheap, um but other than that, mm. yeah. Well there's good. different things. I do love I, it, def- I do love Iceland, it's an amazing country. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's um there's di- it's in different places, different things are expensive, like in Sweden, chicken is expensive. It's like chicken's weirdly expensive in Sweden. Um, yeah, so there's I there's uh, chicken's one of the really weird ones, but I think I actually pay less taxes in Sweden than I would in Scotland. Um, I, think I pay I only pay like twenty four because I thought my tax was going to be thirty one, thirty two percent, but somehow I ended up only paying about twenty four percent. It's like yeah. Um, so as long as the tax man don't come knocking, <laughs> so, God, from, my <laughs> well, from what I gather, it's like that your employer has to pay eight, has to pay like one third of your taxes for you. So, like, we actually don't have to contribute to our own pensions, that like, our employer has to pay all of our pension for us. So, it's yeah. quite it's pretty good, but I've got, yeah, I've you know, I've got pensions in. I've got pri- I, I had a private pension set up already, so it was um I don't I need to sort out the Swedish one right enough. That's the other thing. Um but the Swedish pension system's very, very secure, so quite lucky that way. Yeah. What's your time yeah. in Sweden? I want to say it's sixty seven, but I mean to be honest, I'll probably be like my dad. My dad's seventy. My dad's a lawyer and he's still uh He's still working away. He shows no sign of wanting to retire. I don't think it'd be good for. I mean, if at that age, I don't think it'd be good for him to retire. I think he needs something to do. He's more like a. These days, he's more like a, a consultant rather than a, you know, fully fledged kind of thing. Um, he's like an expert witness lawyer. So mm. it's quite interesting. So I'll probably be like my dad. I'll probably be. I'd be bored if I didn't have something to do. I'd finish tomorrow. <laughs> I, um, I, I am. I am not. I am not built for working. <laughs> I'm built for sleeping and sitting on the chair watching telly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 so yeah. If, if it was a lottery win, then it'd be like, yeah, just hire someone to do some investments for me, <laughs> and then uh, and then sit back. <laughs> yeah, I think my alas, uh, it's not the way of the world, but. <laughs> Yeah, my my dad retired. Well, health 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 caused it, but he says like just get out as soon as you can. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna follow him. Mate. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's one of the things. If I was if I was in a job I absolutely loved, sort of thing, then that's different. But like, it, I'm in a job that's okay. <laughs> so it's it's all right. But I don't want to do it for the rest of my life, sort of thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but there we go. Nice. We've, got, we've got to make the bread and butter. Got to make the monies, but yeah, <laughs> it's uh, hi. It's always it's always fun to to do these things. So yeah, no, it's I, I quite. I mean, I'm quite enjoying it at the moment. I've managed to set up a lot of things that will mature very nicely in the future and stuff. And it's quite. It's just quite interesting to try and sort it out. It's been a bit of a hurdle just now because. Of certain things, but yeah, no, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, aye, aye. what we might do then? I think two, maybe two hours is a good place to stop, and we can just sit and chill and chat offline a little bit, probably. Yeah, my battery's playing up now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot out any else. So good yeah, to talk cool. that. Yeah, cool. We'll just. A... I'm sorry, on your way. Go... No, I was just gonna say have a good Christmas if I if I don't speak before and. Um... I hope you have a good one. It's, well, as good as you can in these crazy times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's it, yeah. But, uh, I know, it was good. It's just a wee spontaneous thing, as I say, to kind of get the Scottish beers out there. I need to choose which ones to which one to review as my Christmas Eve beer and my Christmas Day beer and stuff. But, um, yeah, no, it should be should be quite probably one of the big Imperial Stouts. Maybe the Cinnamon Bun Imperial Stout would be a good one for... Uh, for Christmas Day, um, but I, but no, uh, guys, uh, those of you watching, if you don't follow Bullman's Beer Reviews or Jayco Beer, make sure you go and check them out. Jake Style is 
is awesome. I really enjoy it with the little edits and stuff. They're very clever. And yet, like we were saying earlier, it's nice to Jake, it's always just great to watch Jake being silly on YouTube. It's <laughs> awesome. And uh, Greg's beer reviews, uh, very down to earth in my mind. I really enjoy watching those as well. So guys, those of you watching, make sure you give these guys a follow. Show them some love. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, Scottish beer unboxing with a few American thing we've thrown in and uh, yeah no doubt you'll see these guys on the channel again at some time but hope you enjoyed this one quick fire hang out and catch you guys very soon cheers